watching another episode of the Micro Pistol Ammo Quest, where I'm looking for the best rounds for the 380 Micro Pistols of today, those that have about a 2.0 inch barrel, like the TCP or the LCP. And finding ammunition is not all that easy, so I scour ammoseek.com to see what pops up, and this popped up, Precision One. I have no idea who they are. I have no idea how this ammo will do. There's no ballistics information. There's no indication of, of what we've got here, other than to say that it is loaded with the Hornady XTP bullet. And I have found the XTP to be a really good performer in other rounds, so I expect that we will probably find this to be a pretty good round too. The ammo looks high quality. The box proclaims that they use the highest quality components. Um, that's all fine and dandy, but when the rubber meets the road, or specifically when the bullet meets the ballistic gel, that's where we'll find our answers. Let's go get them. Did you just see what I just saw? Let's look at that again. Oh, come on. Cut. Flag on the play. That was totally unacceptable. What we just saw there is a case of what I call bullet bounce back, where the bullet penetrated deeply into the gel block and then bounced off the edge, and I guess the, the temporary cavity is not collapsing soon enough, and so there's still an empty hole, and the bullet just kind of bounces back through there, and then it moves forward a little. We've always had bounce back to a very little degree, and that I've been okay with, because that also happens in calibrated organic ballistic gel. I verified that when I did a comparison video between ballistic gel and clear ballistic gel, but this that's just totally unacceptable. That completely invalidated the results of that bullet. We could see that it clearly penetrated deeply into the gel, but where it came to rest, nine and three quarters inches, obviously it did much better than that. And it's not fair to this manufacturer, Precision One, that we represent this as being an accurate result because clearly that is not an accurate result. And the whole purpose of my testing here is to get accurate results. So what I've come to is that we need another corroborating factor. We need another data point that we can look at in order to verify what we're seeing and make sure that we're getting accurate results. In general, I've done a comparison of ballistic gel against uh, clear ballistic gel and found that on average, they do generally return similar results. But in cases like this, we're gonna have to find a way to rescue this data. And what I found, and this is really fantastic, Grab your Kindle or your Kindle app on your iPhone or, or buy the hard copy, but this book, Quantitative Ammunition Selection by Charles Schwartz. This is fantastic because this book is a model. It's a mathematical model whereby if you supply it some key information, the diameter of the expanded bullet, the speed of impact, and the recovered weight, it can tell you exactly how far that bullet would have traveled in organic ballistic gel. In fact, he's, he's verified this with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rounds, and he's got it down to where he can predict within a centimeter exactly where the bullet would come to rest. So what we can do, we already have that information from the clear ballistics gel. We've got the bullet weight, we've got the chronograph speed, and we've got the expanded diameter. So I can just plug those numbers into the Schwartz formula and get a second corroborating piece of information that will let us know how far that bullet should have traveled. All right, now there is a slight variation we have to account for, which is when I did my comparison of clear ballistics gel against genuine organic 10% gelatin, what I found is that the bullets tend to expand just a little bit bigger in the organic gelatin, a little bit smaller in the clear ballistics gel, about 5% or so. And the bigger the bullet, it seems, the more that that expansion difference is. So on the 380s, I've found with a bunch of research, I've narrowed it down to where it's about a 4.7% difference. So what I'm gonna do in order to verify my results with the Schwartz formula 
is I'm going to use the numbers that we get in the clear ballistics, but account for that difference by making the bullet be 4.7% larger. Then we're going to run it through the formula and we're going to report those results right alongside with the penetration results we got. And by doing this, we should eliminate this uh, variation, this, this variable of this bounce back. And instead we should get corroborating information that will give us accurate detailed penetration results. I actually ended up with six shots in the block because one of them went way too low and I thought that it may actually have uh, spent its time traversing outside the block, but in, in evaluating the block, it's valid. So we actually have a six shot average here. Every one of the bullets expanded. It's a mild expansion, but that's what we're used to with the XTP. The performance in the gel block was really fantastic. The first two bullets stopped short, but they were victims of excessive bounce back. So while the first one came to rest at 9.75, the shorts formula shows that it really traveled 13.82 inches. The second bullet stopped at 10.13. Shorts formula shows it is 13.51 inches. Then, even without factoring for the Schwartz formula, we got over 12 inches of, of penetration at the resting point of each of the bullets. So the third bullet stopped at 12 inches, and Schwartz shows it should have gone 14.39. The next bullet went to 13 inches, and the Schwartz formula shows it should have been 13.83. Then we had one go 13 and a quarter inches, which Schwartz would be 13.60 and the furthest bullet went 13.75 inches, which the Schwartz formula agrees with. It says it should have gone 13.7. So if we ignore correcting for bounce back, we got an average of 12 inches, which is fantastic. But if we actually correct for the bounce back, the average was 13.81 inches, and that is simply outstanding performance from a 380. The recovered precision ones look pretty much textbook perfect. They all expanded exactly like they were designed to do. Their expansion is minimal, but we know that from the XTP bullet design that they always expand minimally. This one actually looks a bit abnormal. This is one that nearly exited off the bottom of the block and it actually hit the table that the gel block was sitting on. So it's a little bit distorted there from that impact. But the other five did exactly what you would want a 380 bullet to do. They penetrated deeply and they expanded to become bigger than their normal caliber. Precision one with the XTP bullets in it did a great job in bear gel. We're still gonna test it in the denim to make sure that the performance holds up, but I'm really optimistic about this round. Well done, Precision one. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I've got more episodes of the Yammo Quest. Then we have the finals coming up. And you can also check out the blog or like us on Facebook for even more information.